afternoon and welcome to Carol and Cymru's revision sessions. This session will focus on GCSE Spanish and will be presented by Daniela Laderi from Ascol Penglais. The session will last around 45 minutes where the teacher will go through the relevant subject content. If you have any questions, please use the question and answer section and we will endeavour to answer your questions during the session. The session will be recorded with the recording and any relevant resources uploaded to the ESCOL website in the Caroline Cymru area. Thank you. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a la tercera sesión de español. Uh, today we're going to focus on the reading task and uh, so try to understand the questions in Spanish, uh, find the questions, look at skills, and uh, find understand find um, resources online free uh, online tools to independent revision and developing vocabulary so let's start uh, we're gonna start looking at one of the reading paper it's an overlapping questions for foundation and uh, the IEM tiers tier and again we're gonna look at uh, some online revision tools so first of all, we're going to start looking at the questions in Espanol. It's uh, an important, it's important to familiarize ourselves with uh, uh, questions, question words. They're really helpful to understand what is asked for us from us, both in the reading, but as well as useful in the listening and in the speaking questions. So let's have a look at those. So we got cuando, cuando, when, why, por qué. What is, qué es, which or which one, cual, cuáles, who is, quién es, cómo or how, a qué hora, at what time, dónde, where. So if you are not familiar or if you kind of know those words as well while making sure that um, you you uh, you memorize them because uh, they're really really useful tools to 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 understand and formulate uh, questions so for the reading task what we want to do we want to first make sure that we read the instructions do we understand what is required from us first read the test to get a general uh, meaning of it then you're looking at the questions and look at the marks for each questions on the right hand side so that you know how many details you're looking for. Read the text again carefully. Make sure that you're underlined keywords and color coding again is a really helpful tool to visualize um, and have a clear picture of what is used, what is request from you. Be ready as well to the use meaning and draw inference. So sometimes you have to work out the, the actual questions. It might not be straightforward. You can write notes on the script. It's really useful to do so. It, it does help. Make sure you check in the tenses so that you're answering in the in the correct the correct tense. So if the question is formulated in the past, make sure you are uh, answering in the past tense. Um, if you haven't watched the previous session, uh, it's there is an um, online uh, full revision of um, of the verbs and main tenses. So familiarize yourself with those. And if you can't find find the answer straight away, don't panic. Make sure that you take the time to reread the passage, and don't leave blanks. Have an educated guess. If the words come to the words, if you exhausted all your tools, just give it a reason, a reason guess. Because with your gut, something most most likely you write. Uh, make sure you practice. So we're gonna do again a past paper revision. Uh, you should be familiar with this website now, but uh, I'm gonna give a last um, open it a last time. So if you open uh, this link you find the uh, WJC qualifications you can find past papers in here so you're going to do put past papers and uh, if we're looking at the list the, the reading again um, 
so you you'll be downloading this paper for foundation or for higher you are downloading this one so you can click on this or download this the foundation and so here the higher um so let's um so it's a good make sure that you practice on different different answers uh, different different papers um so we're going to look at practicing different styles of literary tests, different authors, extract from novels, poem, etc. There'll be some some other revision tools that uh, we we'll look at. So reading, reading for pleasure, is an excellent way uh, to develop your vocabulary and uh, developing your ability to uh, read and understand uh, your your Spanish. Mm. Even if you don't understand every, every single word, you can deduce meaning from the context. So it's important that you read the text for gist, so for general comprehension, that you read a question, that you read the text again carefully and focus on the tenses and keywords that help you to locate the answers. The answers appear in order in the text and you need to answer in English. So let's have a look at this question. This for the paper 2019 would be question nine for foundation and question two uh, for higher. So if you haven't already, take the time uh, to open the, the past paper. Uh, so we're going to first start by reading the text to get a general idea. So question nine. Read the extract from the novel Donde Abita, Abita el Olvido by Lorena Franco. Answer the questions in English. I'm going to read it for you one time. Desde que era niño, Tomás Ruiz tenía una vida muy complicada. Todos los profesores decían a sus padres que su hijo no era normal porque no se relacionaba adecuadamente con los otros niños de su clase, pero Ricardo y Clara Ruiz no querían aceptar la verdad, porque en casa Tomás nunca se comportaba de una manera extraña delante de sus padres. Sin embargo, Tomás siempre estaba solo en la escuela durante la media hora de recreo y ningún otro niño se acercaba a él. Tomás siempre hablaba con su amiga imaginaria, Amelia, durante la hora de comer. Amelia le hacía reír contándole chistes o historias graciosas que inventaba solo para él. Tomás compartía su bocadillo con Amelia sin importarle lo que dijeran los demás. Amelia siempre estaba a su lado y siempre le protegía de los ataques de so que Tomás recibía. Era la única persona que conseguía que sus días escolares fueran un poco más agradables. Nunca le abandonaría. So you read the first time, what is the, what is the general topic? So what tense as well are used? So make sure that you highlight the verbs in the text. I'm going to leave you for one minute to try to find as many verbs as you can. I like them. What ends are these verbs in? Can you say why is this stance used? So let's have a look at these verbs. So we got era, tenía, decían, era, relacionaba, querían, aceptar. Se comportaba, estaba, se acercaba, hablaba, comer, reír, contándole, compartía, dijeran, conseguía, fueran, abandonaría. 
most of those verbs are in the imperfect tense. So it's the tense that help us remember facts that happened in an unspecified time in the past. It's the tense that we use to say something that used to happen, perhaps uh, repetitively, uh, sometime in the past. Not in a specific point in the past, but sometimes the past, so the imperfect tense. Again, if you're not familiar, refer to the previous session that we did on the uh, speedy verbs revision and uh, make sure that you familiarize yourself with the imperfect tense. So now you want to scan the text to work out the topic and you want to write headings in English next to the, to the tense. Okay. So let's let's have a look. First of all, we're going to read the questions and underline the keywords. So the questions we got: Why did Thomas' teacher say that he wasn't normal? Why didn't his parents accept the truth? Why write one detail about break time? So only one. You don't need to write any many more than that. Uh, how did Amelia make Thomas laugh? Write one detail. And how did Amelia help Thomas? And you need to write two details. So what we want to try to do is uh, to locate the answers in the text. And again, the answers are in the same order as the question. We're going to do the first one together. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of time to try to find. Uh, so where will you find question A? Why did Thomas teacher say that he was he wasn't normal? Have a brief look. And you know that he's A, so it's going to be somewhere at the top of the of the of the text. And there we go. Por qué no se relacionaba adecuadamente? Con los, los, los otros niños de su clase. We got the word normal that comes up to help us. Yeah. And por qué? What, because. And here, what we've done is highlighted the key, um, the key part is almost a match up. We've matched up the question with a relevant point in the text before answering the question. So, los profesores decían que su hijo no era normal porque no se relacionaba adecuadamente con los otros niños de su clase. Okay, take a minute now to try to do the same thing with the other questions, B, C, D, E. Can you locate them in the text as if this was just a match up exercise? So let's have a look at where these answers are in the text. So 
Question B, why didn't his parents accept the truth? And uh, we got this in, we got Ricardo and Clara Ruiz no querían aceptar la verdad, the truth, aceptar, another word that help us, the cognate, isn't it? Very similar. Por qué? Because, so that por qué, one more time, answers the question be, to why. Hmm? Por qué en casa Tomás nunca se comportaba de una manera extraña delante de sus padres. So we matched again the second question with what is it in the text. Question C, write one detail about break time, and this is located in uh, here. Durante la media hora de recreo, during the half an hour of break time, Tomás siempre estaba solo. So question D, how did Amelia make Tomás laugh? So how do we say laugh in Espanol? You need to write one detail. Where is the question? Where is we talking about Amelia? Amelia le hacía reír contándole chistes o historias graciosas que inventaba solo para él. And here is the matchup of the question D. So where is the answer? And did again how como did Amelia help Thomas? Write two details this time. Amelia siempre estaba a su lado y siempre le protegía de, lo de los ataques que Tomás recibía. And you got, uh, you've, you've located question E. So let's have a look. So now you want to try to read it again and uh, work out the topics and write, you can write some headings in English next to the text, some notes to help you out. So now we're ready to answer the, the questions. Uh, is there any words uh, that we've not seen that can help you understand the text? Cognates, like we've seen in, uh, earlier on, we see accept and we see that we say aceptar. Um, is there, can you use the context, the questions to, uh, to help you work it out? Make sure that you're not leaving blanks. So don't, don't leave gaps. Uh, if the words come to the words, really trust your guts and uh, make sure that uh, you, you develop it. Uh, so let's have a look. So in here, for, for instance, in the first in the first question, uh, got why did Thomas teacher say that he was a normal? And we got por qué no se relacionaba adecuadamente con los otros niños de su clase. What well, words, for instance, we know that we're coming from here. So because no, so it's a negative. What could it be relacionaba? Adecuatamente. Does it sound any similar to the English? Con, with who? Los otros niños de su clase. We're, we're going to answer the first question together. Why did Tomas teacher say he was a normal? He didn't get on or he didn't relate. No se relacionaba hmm? with the other children con los otros niños en escuelas de su clase or he didn't have any friends in his class. So take a couple of minutes now to try to answer the other questions. Looking again at the contents, why didn't his parents accept the truth? You know that it's here and you know that with porque is giving you the key to why. Hmm? So you can start answering those questions in English.
So why didn't his parents accept the truth? Because he never behaved strange, strangely. So, porque Tomás en casa nunca, never, se comportaba, behaved, de una manera extraña, in a, a strange way. Because he never behaved strangely, or he never behaved like that, in front of them, or at home, en casa. Or it was different at home. Gonna give another minute to try to work out question C. One detail about break time. So look at where is located in the text. Can you answer in English one detail about break time? What does solo mean? What does siempre mean? What does durante mean? Tomás was always, siempre, alone, solo. No other child came near him. Yeah, this, this is the second part. Ningún otro niño se acercaba a, a él. No other child uh, came near, se acercaba a él, him. Hmm? Or you could also have just said that the break time is one to say, you could give them how long it is. So it's half an hour, maybe a hora. So one detail. Either of those answers would have worked. Question D, let's have a go. One minute, let's try to work it out. You know now where it is in the text. Can you answer how did Amelia make Thomas laugh? Write one detail. What does reír mean? So, hacer reír. Do you know what does contar chistes means? Oh. Historias graciosas. What does inventaba mean? Does it sound any near any English words? Amelia, she told him jokes, chistes. She made up, invented, hmm, funny stories, historias graciosas. And we're going to the last one. How did Amelia help Tomas? You can write two details. So can you, you've already located the answer in the text. minutes well, siempre min estaba a su lado le protegía the sound in near the english ataques what does it sound like You could say she was always by his side, siempre, always, estaba, was, a su lado, by his side. 
or she kept a company, similar meaning just said in different way. She protected him, sempre, always, le protegia, is the protect him, from attacks, or from bullies, de los ataques. Hmm? She made his school days more enjoyable, she won't abandon him. Uh, con la carriera, la, la única persona que conseguía que sus días escolares fueran un poco más agradables, that she made uh, school days, días escolares, más, more, enjoyable, agradables. And she won't abandon him. Eh? Nunca, never, le abandonaría, would abandon him. Okay, so alternative that uh, convey the same meaning would also be accepted. Summarize, if the questions are in English, make sure you answer in English. If the questions are in Spanish, so answer in Spanish unless it's otherwise specified. The mark for each question links to the number of details that you're looking for, because you, you need to manage your time as well. So if you're given one detail, you're sure, just move on. Look out for cognates but also for false friends, for words that are simi look similar but have different meanings. And inferences, so can you infer meaning from the text? Make sure you check the tenses and time indica indicators, so siempre, nunca, and so on. So, and if you're stuck, again, don't, don't, don't leave blanks, make sure you just give it an take an educated guess. So as, you, as we notice, the vocabulary, having a good vocabulary is vital uh, for this. Uh, so I want to show you some uh, um, internet resources that are really useful to, to improve the vocabulary and develop your confidence as well. Uh, Duolingo is a really good way pr to practice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up so you can uh, uh, if you if you don't have if you have an account, just press on. Uh, uh, I already have an account, uh, but otherwise you can put Spanish. Start learning, and it guides you through. It guides you through, as you can see, to. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, and you can do it well at this point. You, you can have, for instance, uh, a, um, a little test to five minutes test to see where you get an answer. We can even start uh, the text. Uh, you can uh, it starts easy because it's trying to locate your level. So it gives you some some ideas here. So you can do my passport. Passaporte. And it gives you as well. Sorry, Miss. Can we hear the um, the listening? Can we hear the computer? Just finding my mic. Yes, you can hear it. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. Just want to double check that I shared the sound. Yeah. Thank you. So we can put uh, my password so we can hear the the um, the word. Oh, sorry, I got it wrong because again, and this is actually a good a good thing because he's asking for my passport, so mi pasaporte, not just passport. El hospital so está aquí. You got a little listening exercise, so you can listen in the first time. Um, El hospital está aquí. And if you still stuck, you can listen a little bit more slow and tap what you hear. El hospital está aquí. Está aquí. Okay, so you can... Uh, Listen as many times as you like. And he builds up, uh, where is your ticket? It's a good idea. So, donde? Donde? Esta. Tu. Boleto. And you carry on. So, how do you say you are a boy? Compressor, tu. Tu. Eres. 
un niño. It's a really good way to develop vocabulary. You can. Tú hablas español. You can do five minutes a day, and uh, it's really good way to embed uh, your learning. Hablando español. What's an apartment? Un apartamento. And try to repeat the words as well. So, un apartamento. Try to sound Spanish as well. It's a good way to improve your, your vocabulary as well as your intonation, your pronunciation. How do I say I? Yo. Want. Quiero. A. Una. Jacket. Chaqueta. Okay. I'm not going to um, carry on with, with this, but I would really recommend uh, to to complete, to, to, have, to have a good go at uh, practicing Duolingo, both for foundation and uh, for, um, for higher level. Uh, another way to improve your vocabulary is uh, to, to read, mm, read for pleasure, put two, sorry, two such a websites in here, there's some online activities that you can use to develop your vocabulary. So there are, there is some in uh, different topics. So for instance, comida, food, el cuerpo, the body, emociones, sensaciones, emotions, sensations, expressions, house, languages, nationalities, colors, countries, and so on, and developing. Uh, your your vocabulary. So let's have a look, for instance, at hmm, vocabulary. So for instance, for comida, you got comidas y bebidas, and you got different activities, different activities. So you got some audio, some canciones, cultura, gramática, some podcasts, which are good a good way as well to to listen and vocabulary and some videos as well. So let's have a look at uh, one for, sorry, so we went for comidas. Let's press on it. So you wanna use, in terms of level, you're looking at A1, A2 and B1 at the moment. Um, So you got some vocabulary interactive, uh, some interactive vocabulary in context. So for instance, el agua, the water, el bebe agua, por qué hace calor, ella, ella bebe agua. She drinks water because it's, um, it, it's hot. Uh, Como se dice agua en tu idioma? How do you say water uh, in your language? La verdura. Uh, vegetables, and you got an example. Mi tía compra verdura fresca en el mercado. My uh, auntie buys fresh vegetables in the market. ¿Cómo se dice verdura en tu idioma? How do you say um, vegetables in your, in your language? So it's worthwhile exploring some of those resources. You got another um, listening exercise here. It's a, a continuación tiene un diálogo sobre comidas y bebidas. Lee el diálogo y escúchalo. ¿Conoces el vocabulario marcado en rojo? Haz clic en las palabras en rojo para ver las imágenes. For following, you have a dialogue about food and drink. Read the dialogue and listen to it. Do you know the vocabulary that is uh, in red? Uh, click on the words in red to look at the images. So we're going to listen to it first. ¿Qué comes por las mañanas? Yo desayuno pan con huevos, pero mi hermana desayuna sándwich. ¿Y tú? ¡Qué rico! 
mi familia y yo desayunamos bocadillo y fruta. ¿Y para beber, tú bebes algo por las mañanas? Sí, claro. En verano bebo café y en invierno tomo té. Ah, sí. Yo en invierno tomo café con leche. ¿Y cuál es tu comida favorita? Uf, es que me gusta todo. Pero mi comida favorita es la sopa con verdura y ensalada. ¿Y con carne también? No, yo no puedo comer carne, pero mi hermana sí. Su comida preferida es la hamburguesa. I said the reasoning words that you don't know. You can also click, click on, the, on the images and uh, you know that the café con leche is coffee with milk, for instance. Uh, so it's, it's worthwhile uh, looking at uh, exploring the website to, to find that there is some games, there's a memory game. Los huevos. Uh, where you need to, so you got, uh, La leche. To, to match up, I think those are the sets. There we go, so it's, it's a matching up. Um, and uh, so a few, few more games and activity on different, on different subjects. Um, some, for instance, this one, complete the sentences. Um, and you need to drag them. Mi, comi, mi bebida preferida en invierno es el té verde. So, uh, it's worthwhile having, having a look. Uh, another website that we were looking at, as we said, so it's uh, Lecturas Paso a Paso, which offers several, um, several, uh, um, uh, several ideas for books in, uh, in a beginner's level, which we can use to develop reading from pleasure. So we got El Sueño de Otto, Otto's Dreams, Gente que lee, People that read, Amnesia, Para Soñar, to dream, Lejos de casa, far away from home, El Delfín, the, the, dol the Dolphin, Vuelo 505 con destino a Caracas. Flight 505 with destination Caracas. El hombre de bar, the man in the bar. El misterio de la llave, the mystery of the key. Paisaje de otoño, autumn landscape. 12 a las 12, 12 at 12. So you can have a look at different ones and practice your vocabulary. Let's have a look uh, at one. So let's say... Uh, El Delfin, for instance. Okay, and here you got different activities. You got the text, activities that you can do before reading, after reading, and information about the book. So I'm just gonna go for the text, and uh, we can spend a little moment to read about it. I'm gonna read it out loud for you. You can follow uh, what what it says. Um, I'm gonna. El inspector Rodríguez. El inspector Rodríguez estaba desesperado. La ciudad sufría una verdadera ola de robos. En los últimos seis meses habían robado joyas por valor de 500 millones de pesetas. Nunca robaban en joyerías. Siempre en casas particulares. El inspector no sabía si era un ladrón o toda una banda de ladrones la que realizaba los atracos. And what you can do is to stop here and... Oops, hold on. Let's go back to... So if you... If you can carry on, carry on work, walking, uh, carry, carry on reading, but otherwise you can stop every paragraph. How many words do you know? Is there words that you don't know? El inspector Rodriguez estaba desesperado. So if you click on desesperado, it's well, desperate. Yeah, so the Rodriguez inspector was desperate. La ciudad, the city, was suffering a real all a real, a real wave of um, rob, robbings of teeth. 
So if one thing that you can do is to highlight, sorry, I'm not sure why I can't highlight at the moment, but you can highlight the words that you don't know and maybe use an online dictionary uh, to, to work them out. Uh, so for instance, you can use word reference. It's a really good one to look individual words. So you got, for instance, if you're not familiar with Ola, yeah, um, you can look it up and it tells you that is wave. Mm? And Robbers was said it's, um, well, uh, TEFs. Yeah. In los últimos seis meses, in the last six months, habían robado, so you got robar again, they had um, stolen joyas, um, that is, uh, in, I can find in English, so let's use, uh, let's use word reference, jewelry, yeah, jewelry, Je jewels, gem. Hmm? So you can look it up. Por valor de 500 millones de pesos, for the value of uh, uh, 15 million of pesetas. So pesetas is the old currency of Spain before Euro. Nunca, never. Robaban. So you got another way to find these robos. Robado, robaban. Never. They used to um, steal in jewelry shop. Siempre, always, in individual houses and in casas particulares. El inspector, the inspector, no sabía, didn't know si era un ladrón, if it was only one thief, o toda una banda de ladrones, o a, a full band of thieves, que la que realizaba los atracos, the one that used to, uh, to, to create the, the, um, the attacks. So, Let's see how we can say this in English. Los atracos. Robberies. That's, we got time for another paragraph. Uh, entraban en las casas cuando no había nadie o había, o había poca gente. They used to come in the houses when there was nobody or there were few people. Nunca había habido violencias, ni las puertas destrozadas, ni heridos, ni muertos. Never there had been violences, ne, no, nor destroyed doors, puertas, nor heridos, nor injured people, ni muertos, nor death people. Todos los trabajos habían sido realizados limpiamente, o the job had been realized nicely, cleanly. Solamente en un caso, una vieja criada había sido dormida mediante cloroformo. Only in one case, a lady, um, let's have a look at criada, how to translate this. Criada, we'll reference again. A servant lady, a maid lady, había sido dormida, had been put asleep through chlor chloroform. That be the translation, chloroform. Chloroform in English. No había podido ver la cara del atracador. She couldn't see the face of the, the attacker of the robber. Tampoco sabía si iba solo o estaba acompañado. She didn't even know she was, if he was on his own or he was with somebody else. So we're gonna uh, leave it here, we, but you got the links to try to develop your vocabulary. Really reading, take the time to read is a good way. Uh, muchas gracias por escuchar. Is there any questions? There aren't any questions today. Thank you very much and we shall see you next week. Thank you. Well, good night.